Hi, this is KYG at your service. Today I'm going to share with you a story about public caning in my school, ACS Tele Intan, in the 1960s. You know, we had this uh, headmaster who was obsessed with public caning. We had many headmasters, and this is the only one who really reveled in caning students. And during his reign of terror of a few years, no less than 30 students have been caned for the slightest infringement. Some, of course, uh, deserve it, like stealing, you know, playing truant, and there was one case of a student. This is true. Peeing on a whole on a receptacle of holy water, you know, across the road in a church. And it is a bit alright. Anyway, for this kind of kinning thing, the teachers usually submitted the, the names. And HM would just do it blindly, he would not ask uh, the reason why. He would just announce over the intercom for the school to assemble and then do his dirty work. You know, two slashes to the back. And after each, after the, the coup de gras, he would turn around and say, was that good? Now how would the child feel? He was in excruciating pain. Not only the damage his pride as well. So he was sitting with revenge in his heart. I was keen once, yeah, for other reasons. A story yet to be told, all right. So I think the teachers were just as guilty because they have blood on their hands, because they are the ones, they were the ones who submitted the names to the headmaster. And then during the ceremony, they would just turn, turn their back, you know, and of course, and then turn their back and then maybe, you know, and but there were some teachers who really sympathized with the students, with the victims, and felt that the, that the headmaster needn't have done that, you know, shouldn't, or shouldn't have done that. After all, you know, they were just children. But then again, you see, at that time in history, the doctrine of spare, the, sparing the rod and spoil the child was uh, was yeah was in use and if we complained to parents we would get the second kidding as well so in other words the headmaster and the teachers were doing the parents good turn by bringing up the, up the ch child for them so it's no use complaining the students but after that of course uh, the other students will be laughing at the victims but children are children, you know. They will do what they do. But as you grow older, you as you grow older, you have you look in you, uh, on high side. You look back. I think it's it, it's all for the better good for you, you know, to bring you up. So those are unpleasant memories, yeah. But if you look back now, it's a fond memory. So. Of course, we know that, you know, anything, anything, you know, if you're hurt, the, the wound will heal, you know, but the scar remains. But it, it will remain as a fond memory, that's all, but not with uh, hatred or animosity. So, we look back with fondness. What you can see is uh, that was part of the, the process of growing up, a process of learning. So some headmasters are uh, okay. Some, you know, they are also okay. In many cases of us being hit, you know, being punished by teachers. There was one teacher also, you know. So when we did something wrong or somebody did something wrong in class, he would slap the whole class. This teacher, I think many of you will remember. If you're from a school, you remember. And some normally 
we female teachers wouldn't do that. You know, won't beat you up. They would just tell you to stand in the sun. And there was one teacher who asked us to run around the field. It's like standing on the chair, the kind of thing. So this kind of punishment was useful in those days, you know, bringing us up. So now we can look back, you know, with laughter and fondness. Okay, I've uh, said a lot for today. Alright, have a nice day. Bye-bye.